You're listening to Everyday Engineering, the City of Madison's engineering podcast where we talk about infrastructure. Complex topics explained simply. From the water that flows down your drain to the rain and snow that drains into the lakes. By way, the curbs and streets we design. City engineering touches your life in so many ways. Explained right now in Everyday Engineering. Operating an excavator, designing a street, wiring up an entire floor of lighting, or designing a building. These are all jobs in the trades and construction industry. Also, historically, positions held by men. However, the industry is changing, and the number of women in the construction industry is increasing. Thanks to some of the pioneers who blazed the trail for other women, and also men helping create space at the table as well. My name is Hannah Molinitsky. I'm the City of Madison Engineering Division Public Information Officer. I do communications and host this podcast. And here to talk all things women in construction and beyond are Don McIntosh, President and CEO of CLE Consulting, and Ali Bereni, an instructor at Madison College for 16 years for the Construction and Remodeling Program. Thank you both for being here and taking part in this conversation. We're going to have some fun today. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. So Don and Allie, so tell us a little bit about each of yourselves and your role in this topic of women in construction. So Don, can you kind of start us off? Sure. Thank you for inviting me in. So I am a 100% construction owner, a female construction owner of CLE Consulting, which is a design build firm. We focus on residential construction, designing and building homes all over Dane County. Um, we are a legacy company, and I took um, ownership of that company last year from my former partner, Chuck Elliott, who has been in the construction industry for over 50 years. Wow. Chuck is an absolute um, great mentor. He's still involved with me. At, he is retired, but he's a phone call away at any time. Sure. So that is my role in this industry right now. Awesome. Allie. Uh, yeah, I actually uh, kind of switched gears in my life. In 1993, I went from being a uh, chemist to uh, getting myself hired uh, to learn construction. I learned everything I did on the job. And then uh, 16 years ago, I had the opportunity to apply, and I, I was offered the position of teaching a construction remodeling program at Madison Area Technical College. And I've been doing that ever since. And that's, that's my role now. I, I, I teach a, a, a one-year program in construction and remodeling to all kinds of people, people who are just coming out of high school all the way through people who are trying to change careers like I was uh, back in 93, and uh, to people who are retired who are just now looking for like practically a hobby or something like that to do after retirement. Sure. And you both enjoy being in the construction industry, correct? I absolutely love it. Why? <laughs> every, well, every day um, I is do a new, too, I is a new say, day. Right. I mean, I wake up every day and I absolutely love what I do. It doesn't matter if it's Monday or Friday or Thursday. I have a passion for the industry. And to me, it's just fun to be able to design and create and build people's dream homes. It's really a lot of fun. Absolutely. Yeah, Ellen. I love it. I, I When I made that switch from, from sort of uh, working as a chemist, it, it felt very slow and you couldn't really see that progress and in construction you see progress every day which is really gratifying and now as a in my role as a teacher I'm really I'm part of being able to help people sort of see their next chapter in life and it's such a great career for people and and everybody everybody understands what a carpenter does and they appreciate what a carpenter does because we all live in a house <laughs> and we all yeah. drive down the road. And, we, you know, we all understand that carpenters are such an integral part of our society. So, yeah, it's great. Absolutely. And I should preface that. So I'm married to an electrician. And um, when your friends all know someone in the construction industry, boy, do they have questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> yeah. When any, at any part of the industry, no matter if you're in the trades, you're in management, you're in communications, you're in anything, people always have questions and you always have a good friend who's a carpenter or an electrician or, or somebody involved that way. You don't forget them. You keep that number in your phone. Uh, so I, I guess let's kick this off and say, you know, women in construction, you know, what comes to mind when you hear that, both of you? Well, it's, it's certainly still rare. Um, even 
for us, uh, we, we have about uh, 30 students a year, and if four or five of them are women, that is considered a pretty good strong year for us in terms of women's representation. So it's still a small number, um, but the women who like to choose to be in our program, they are self-selecting. They want to do this because no woman ever falls into construction um, in, in the way that I think sometimes men sort of fall into it because that's just what they've always been around. Sure. And so they tend to be super motivated, super interested. They ask a lot of questions. Yeah. Don, what yeah. about you? I was going to say, over the last few years, I'm starting to see more and more women out at the job sites. Um, women are starting to follow their passion. And I encourage women, if there's something that you want to try, go try it. You know, don't be afraid of it. It's not a man's world. If you want to be an electrician or a plumber or an HVAC person, um, you know, there are programs and apprenticeships out there that help people get involved in these. And I'm always promoting that. But I have to admit, you know, it is still rare, like Allie said, where there aren't a lot of women. A lot of times if I show up on a job site and there's some new workers, they think I'm the homeowner, you know, and I have to let them know I'm the contractor. Mm -hmm. So um, Surprise. they just assume. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. You know, the, the longer you work with your group, um, the more they understand. And they, they really do appreciate having a woman's perspective on the job site as well. Absolutely. So. I, I think that one of the things... You know, as as we talk about this, you know, and and some of the conversations that I've had within the industry with women is is there's this very delicate balance. Some women do not want to be pegged as the woman on the job. They want to be treated completely equally. They don't. It does not matter. And 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 sometimes that's what they want. That's what works. That's that's how it, how it happens. But then there's also that fine delicate walk where that conversation needs to happen that we need more women and to be noticing that and you know it, it, it's just a very delicate conversation at times why I guess I don't know you know I I, I don't I won't pose that question here because I feel like we got a lot to go through but I just think that this conversation is so necessary and as I'm hearing from both of you is there's not enough women and I guess why do you think that women are aren't the first to jump at, these, at this industry, and why should they? Yeah, I really believe that it comes from uh, the way that we're raised, you know, grade school, middle school, high school, guidance counselors. This isn't something that they have brochures and pamphlets and say, you know, are you interested in electrical work or plumbing work? They don't necessarily think of women as going into the trades. And not just, um, you know, th there's architecture, there's interior design, there are so many things that women can do. I went down the path of interior design. That's how I originally got started. And then as a designer, I really felt like the projects that I was designing weren't getting built the way I wanted them. So heck, let me do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I you know, went and got the education I needed to be able to do that. And, um, but I think a lot of women are intimidated by that and they think it's a man's you know, world in construction and they can't do it. Why is that though? I, you know, I, I go back to parents don't promote it, grandparents don't promote it, guidance counselors don't promote it. I've taken an active role um, in Dane County. We go to schools and talk with young people about the opportunities, boys and girls. And we set up um, at career fairs, we set up displays. And I think a lot of times when I am there and other women colleagues are there, the young girls come up and they go, what do you do? You're, you're in construction, what do you do? And we explain our roles and it, you can just almost see like a light bulb go on for them, like, wow, I never thought I could do that. And yeah, that for the last couple of years, um, my colleague Sandy Thistle has been uh, helping to run a Girl Scout building camp. Sure. And so it's a, a couple weeks and they, they work with kids from kindergarten age all the way through high school. And it's just been profoundly successful because they're they're in there building something and all of a sudden it's just like well of course I could do this this is this isn't you know it's not something that like somehow if you're born a boy you have inherent ability to do this and if you're a girl you you can't possibly and I think that's just 
uh, I think there's just a lot of things in society where there's this assumption that guys know how to do this, which they don't, they aren't born knowing, and <laughs> that women can't possibly know how to do this. And it just, as soon as you teach women to do it, they do it. Right. It, it's not that big a deal, really, you know. It's it, And in, when they start to do it, they realize, hey, this is fun, and it's gratifying, and oh, by the way, it actually pays pretty well, and the benefits are good, and oh, maybe there's a reason that guys have been keeping this a secret because this isn't a bad <laughs> career. <laughs> you know, there, there are jobs. And I think that's, I, I think that that's one of the things and the pay, you can make good money. There's job, there's opportunity to grow. There's all of these hands-on things. There's also mind, you know, I mean, if you, you want to use your mind more, if you want to be more physical, if you want to have a merge of the two, I mean, there's, it literally is just sky's the limit. I mean, you can go from everywhere. Well, right. The range is so huge from, you know, building bridges to doing the master bathroom remodel at your house. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. like it, the range is, is enormous. And, and I think if, uh, Maybe historically, a lot of women have been have been told that you're not strong enough, you're not tall enough, whatever, to to do construction work. But there's just a a lot of construction work that doesn't really lean so hard on being strong enough, tall enough, and it leans harder on being creative and thoughtful and a great communicator. If you work in a remodeling job and you have people who live there, you have to communicate with them, and that's something that that a lot of people don't realize is an important aspect of the job, and that. Uh, I've seen a lot of women who have finished our program be very successful in remodeling because people like to have women in their home working. They feel a little safer with it. They feel like women will be tidier. I mean, those are stereotypes that kind of cut both ways. I mean, right. there's no reason that they necessarily would be, but yeah. but people do feel comfortable with it. Absolutely. I was just going to interject there, Allie. I think in new construction, which is what I focus on, the decision makers on building your dream home are they usually the husbands or the wives? It's the wives. The wives are the ones saying, <laughs> this is how I want my kitchen. This is how I want my home. Um, you know, the husbands do have a say, but really the decision makers in building a new home are usually the wives. And I have found with my clients um, being a female, sitting down with them and designing a home with them, and then going through the, you know, the whole construction process with them, I am managing the project. I hire all the trades. I oversee everything. They want to work with women. They want to work with people they trust. And women just connect really well that way. And so the clients that I've worked with over the years are just thrilled to be able to work with women in the role. You know, they may have a female um, cabinet designer that they work with. They like that. Mm -hmm. But to have a woman be the owner of the company and take them through the entire process is really a benefit for me. And I didn't even realize what a benefit that was until I really started talking to my clients and listening to them, mm -hmm. which is really important. We have to listen. And it's the women that are making these decisions. It's the women that pick the builder. It's the women that pick the kitchen. It, you know, So it's really a lot of women, I think, if they understood that, would embrace coming in. And they are usually you know, very... If you're task oriented and you're very organized, um, you do very well in our industry. I feel like um, another element of the industry, it, no matter if you're a woman or a man or however you'd like to identify, is uh, likability. You just want to work with someone you like. Absolutely, a hundred percent. You got to be able to communicate. You, I gotta like you. If I'm gonna let you in my house, I don't care. You know, a woman, man, it just it's. It's, it, I got to like you to yeah. do business with you. And like I, and trust. And trust. The trust is huge yep. because trust. this is such a trust relationship, being in somebody's home on a day-to-day -day basis. I mm -hmm. mean, just okay. having to be like people who work in people's homes have to be conscientious about making sure you lock all the windows on your way out, making sure you clean up after yourself every day. You know, yep. all that, that small stuff that just, I, I don't personally think that women are inherently better at than men, but but women are trusted more to do it. So that's just, we got to take advantage of that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yes. Uh, let's talk about, you know, we kind of touched on why you got interested in the industry a little bit, um, kind of job change, or, or it's just been a part of what you wanted to do. Um, but can you remember a time when being a woman in the industry was challenging? If ever. Maybe you haven't. Maybe you have. Um, 
this is the topic of the podcast episode, so I have to ask. Sure. I, I can, I mean, there were a number of times that it's been challenging and on different levels. I mean, I, I think any time that something involved lifting something very heavy or that it would have been useful to be a, a eight inches taller. I'm not a very tall person. <laughs> um, and, and the thing is that you're working with a group of people and they maybe all have a body type that's five foot 11 and they're 180 pounds and you're this small you know, person, if your task is to lift a beam into place, the way that the task is thought about is how are we going to heave this thing with our five foot 11 bodies? And you feel like you don't participate in it or you can't contribute to it. And well, you know, when I was the low person on the totem pole, that felt kind of bad. Um, when I got to be higher on the totem pole, I was like, you know what? This whole beam doesn't need to be put up as one piece. It could be put up in three pieces that are much more manageable. And so you can kind of problem solve that. And, you know, it, this scaffolding doesn't need to be set up for somebody who's five foot 11. It could be set up for somebody who's five foot three. There's not like a rule about that. But when you're the low person, you don't, you know, those aren't the decisions you make. So those have been, those are, that's a challenge. And, and not everybody has always been super friendly. People have said things that are just wildly inappropriate. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had to choose which battles I'm going to take on. Sure. And as a, as a teacher now of, of women, I, I hear their stories. And, mm -hmm. I, and, you know, yeah, sometimes people say things that are just wildly inappropriate. And, and I counsel my, my students, decide which battles you're going to take on. Because it is exhausting mm -hmm. to fight everyone. Sure. Don? Yes, I, I agree with um, a lot of what you're saying. I do think over the 30 years that I've been involved in the industry, I've seen a huge change, though. Mm -hmm. um, 30 years ago, walking on a job site as a female, you know, was pretty tough. <laughs> you didn't get any respect, you know, a lot of catcalling and a lot of inappropriate things. Over the years, I think, because there are more women out there, and if you're firm, you don't laugh and joke around about it. You know, mm -hmm. th this is a business job site. Sure. It's not going to be tolerated. Mm -hmm. And I stand firm with that. Um, and you earn the respect. Um, I work with about 69 men mm -hmm. and one female. <laughs> You're looking at her. <laughs> so, um, you know, I can joke around and talk with them, you know, their buddies. But when it comes to, you know, that fine line, we don't cross that line. Mm -hmm. And just like you wouldn't in an office setting, you know, it, we're on a job site, but we don't cross the line. And I do think it's it has come a long way. There's still challenges out there. And I, I'm glad to hear, Allie, that you talk to your students about kind of preparing them for that. Because if they've never, you know, had to face some of that, that's going to be tough. I know a few years ago, I had some new electricians and we were walking through a job site. And one of them said, well, should we wait for the guy to get here? And I said, why are we waiting for a guy to get here? Well, is he going to tell? Guy. Is he going to tell us where everything's going? And I said, "No, I'm going to tell you where everything's going. Are you ready to go?" <laughs> so, I yeah. mean, you just, you know, some of it is even on the the young men, you know, they just, you know, they're not prepared, you know, that you may see a, a project manager or an owner come out that's a female. Right. And there's and, and it's nice to to use some levity about that, like to say, well, I'm the guy, you know, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then that takes them aback and they're like, oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well. yeah. Sure. <laughs> but it's a conversation and it's 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 a, a stop to a way of thinking that maybe they just haven't been trained or maybe they have and they know better. And and I think that that goes for anyone. You know, no one should be treated no matter what their gender you know, is, you know, it's just like how they're expecting a, a man to be on, on that site. You know, you're not expecting, let's, let's, I'm not going to expect that I get all men working as electricians or plumbers or carpenters. I mean, it, it, it goes both ways. And I think it leads to my next question of why it's so important to include men in this conversation. Um, I, I talk about this with my husband quite often, you know, when he, you know, he'll say, you know, yes, we have, we have a woman joining us on our crew and it's great, you know, and all of these things. But I, I said, you know, are you being inclusive to her? Are you making sure that others are? And how important is it that men are on this with us and having the sponsors, so to speak, you know, people that are, you know, bringing you with them and creating a space at the table that way. I hate using cliche, you know, <laughs> things like that, that we hear a lot in this kind of conversation. But I think it's really important because I think about 
wonderful people that we have as mentors or people that we work with and they're not always women no. they're men too and we're mm -hmm. all in this together well i mean the fact of the matter is if you're a woman in construction just in your day-to-day -day life you are not going to at this time run into a lot of other women but there will be women, men out there who are supportive of you being there. They're going to be become friends. They're 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 open to to uh, sharing knowledge and and uh, having a dialogue uh, with you about how to solve a problem and things like that. And so you're going to need you're going to need to find men who are who are uh, with you and supportive of you. And they're the ones that are. I find that that can be most effective when something goes down at the job that I just think, you know, like, oh, that was an inappropriate thing. If the man says to his colleague, uh, no, we don't, that's not how we talk at this job. We don't, we don't speak to women that way. We don't speak to men of color that way. We don't do this. They're the ones that are going to have the influence, quite honestly, that, mm -hmm. that can change the culture of that of that workplace and i i've been very lucky I've, I've worked at companies that have had excellent cultures in that respect of just like no we're not we're not about that kind of machismo stupid behavior that's not how we run this we are a professional organization and we're gonna we're gonna teach each, treat each other professionally right we just need to have zero tolerance yeah absolutely. zero tolerance and that has to come all the way from the top yep and, but it, it's it's all the all the, the colleagues that we have that, that are, are happy to see us there, that understand that we have a lot to contribute because we're good at what we do. Absolutely. I think we could talk. Oh, gosh, this is great. I think this is such a great conversation to have and hopefully very helpful to anybody who's listening to this, men, women, um, listening, thinking, anyone thinking about getting into the industry and hopefully um, being supportive of one another as humans. I think that's really, really important. The reason why we want to talk about this especially, and I have to make this plug because um, here at the engineering division at the city of Madison, we do um, a celebration and PR campaign, so to speak, um, Women in Construction Week. It's actually the first week in March, um, nationally recognized across the Amer uh, United States. I, I think it's really important because it's a week that we celebrate by choosing five women to highlight and profile to raise awareness about the different opportunities in the industry. And it spans from engineers and stormwater, sanitary sewer, uh, facilities, operations, management, designing streets and paths and construction inspection in the field. So um, our division covers all of those things and we try to pick, um, you know, division leadership picks five women to highlight and, and really we get wonderful um, feedback and hopefully um, someone hears it and it makes them want to get into the industry. Um, so I guess as we kind of wrap up here, um, I do think that this topic is so interesting and, and so relatable to so many people, especially women who are thinking of getting into the industry. Um, I guess, do you have any, you know, any advice, any groups or supportive um, groups, um, tools, resources, anything you want to mention that might help? Yeah, I would love to mention a couple. Yes. Um, I'm the president um, of the Women in the Construction Industry Group. Um, we started this group in Madison three years ago, and it has grown to be a regional group now, um, servicing a lot of the uh, areas around Madison. There's a large group of women from Milwaukee, Madison, and we are planning a BuildX conference in September. And the information for this can be found at maba.org. It's through the Builders Association. But this group is a group of women that are there to network and support each other through um, bringing in speakers and, you know, education. COVID has kind of put us in a different place right now, but we're doing a lot of virtual calls and planning this conference. Anyone that's interested in the um, industry could come to this conference and network meet the women around the, you know, the regional area of Madison and Milwaukee. That's awesome. That's great. And you said the website was? MABA.org. Okay. The Madison Area Builders Association. Perfect. And, and I, of course, uh, would have to put in a plug for the program, uh, the construction and remodeling program at Madison College. Uh, it's a, a nine-month or one-year, uh, one academic year program. And We'll take students from 
they, they may not have never used any tools whatsoever to, uh, they're going to be building a, a house in the course of that program. They'll learn uh, about estimating and, you know, writing contracts. They'll learn about the building science. So it's a fantastic program. It's super comprehensive. They'll learn how to build, uh, read building plans and make building plans. So it's an excellent way to get into the, pro into the construction industry. And the trades. We cannot, we cannot... We cannot say it enough about, you know, apprenticeships and, you know, a lot of the time um, people aren't quite sure how to or they kind of stumble across it or, you know, I know from my husband's perspective, it was a, a, a career change, you know, and he, he loves what he does. He thinks he loves using his hands. He likes using his mind. He loves, you know, getting out to the site. He likes also working in the office. He loves all, all things and, you know, everything. And um, if you're passionate about something, um, that's where you'd like to be and you really like seeing progress. I like mm -hmm. seeing progress, especially on my master bathroom remodel. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> but I think that this is, this is the kind of conversations that we need to have in the classroom, in our offices, on the job site, no matter um, how we want to approach it. Women in construction is something that is going to continue to increase. And uh, I just cannot thank you enough for being a part of this. Thank you for being here. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks for having me. Yes, absolutely. If you have an idea that you want us to discuss or talk about, share more information on this podcast, please send us a message on the City of Madison Engineering Facebook page because we are here for you every day in engineering.